main challenges of working with a canvas that's a, an oblong and strange and, and huge size, such as a, a piano, is trying to figure out where you're going to place your figures and how you're going to use the instrument itself to guide your compositional decisions. So normally when I start out, like I start out this project like I would any other and make painting and I sort of I measure the canvas, which is 247 inches all the way around, 12 inches high, and I make some sketches and some plans uh, on that format. And so I come up with something like this. So this would be sort of a stretch of the piano that's 48 inches long and 12 inches high. This should theoretically translate directly to the piano and look great. Um, and in fact, that's not at all what happens because the piano itself not only curves, but it recedes into the distance. Um, and then the two surfaces for the paintings are entirely on two different planes of view. So you get these strange distortions in your composition that have to be accounted for directly on the piano, which is why I've had to actually kind of take these shapes and print them out and adjust the sizes of them to get the piano to appear the way that the sketches appear in the books. So today is a big day. We have the entire design transferred onto the rim in, uh, in graphite. And today is the day that I begin the glazing process. Glazing is a very, very old master technique. Um, and it is a process that I'm going to be using to paint this piano. It's actually an optical effect that, that imitates stained glass. So if you keep the layers of paint very thin and the layer of board underneath it is bright white, like this is, the light will actually pass through this layer and you can see the white underneath. It bounces off the white, passes back through the layer and then to your eye. So then when you start putting multiple layers on top of it, the light will go in and out of these multiple layers and create these translucent and uh, optical effects that you just can't get if you put a layer of thick paint and there's no interaction of the light through the paint to the board below. And then we'll start adding colors over the top of that and that's when it will really start to glow. When I began working on the piano as a canvas, it became clear to me that there was an infinite number of angles and an infinite number of perspectives that the viewer could have. And with the story as rich as this, this is the perfect medium to bring it to life. Sometimes you can look at it in the afternoon light from a given angle. The next morning from a different angle, you'll get an entirely different feel or an entirely different uh, mood from the colors that come through the glazes on the piano. It provides a universality of always being different no matter how you look at it. It's almost a living thing. This is an historic piano for many reasons that I'm very proud to be a part of. Steinway was founded in 1853 and since then has been synonymous with great art and great art synonymous with Steinway. It's exciting that 150 years of progress has brought us to the point where we can bring these two things together that does justice to the greatness of pictures at an exhibition and to the legacy of a Steinway piano. One of the ideals that I've had was to bring to life this period of history that's lost in many ways. There's an entire period of Russian culture that I tried to bring back to life, to retell a story in a way that is in many ways interactive and three-dimensional and both challenging for the viewer but also entertaining for the viewer. One of my favorite illusions on the piano 
is how this massive instrument weighing over a thousand pounds appears to float on top of Baba Yaga's hut, which is intricately, intricately hand carved, glittering with gold leaf and sparkling with color. Almost as if the weight of this piano is being held up and carried around by the history of Russia itself. I can't wait to hear pictures at an exhibition come out of this instrument, to have the, the vibrations of those strings create sound that bounces off my painting and out into a concert hall is just a level of, a level of art that I never imagined I'd have the chance to create.